Well, in its simplest form, fasting is going without food. When we fast for spiritual reasons, we're deliberately choosing to go without food as an act of worship or devotion. Fasting didn't begin with Christians. It was already part of Jewish spiritual life in Jesus's day. For example, the Jewish people would sometimes fast when they wanted to repent and turn their hearts back towards God, or when they needed to express their total dependency on him. Well, some of the Jewish people couldn't understand why Jesus' disciples didn't seem to practice fasting. If Jesus was a great rabbi or teacher, why didn't he instruct his disciples to fast like the Pharisees and even the John the Baptist did with their disciples? Well, Jesus' response to that question is interesting. He says, the friends of the bridegroom can't fast while he is with them. Jesus, of course, is the bridegroom. Once he's taken from them, he says though, uh, then they will fast. It seems Jesus is saying that fasting will still have a place in the spiritual lives of his followers after his death and resurrection. But then Jesus goes on to talk about new wine, needing new wineskins. So it seems that on one hand, Jesus is expecting that fasting will be part of our Christian lives. For example, on another occasion, he gave people instructions about when they fast, not if they fast. But he's also acknowledging that something will be different about it. And that makes sense, because on the one hand, Jesus is not with us right now. But on the other hand, he is always with us because he is with us by his spirit. Christians experience God's presence in a new and greater way. But perhaps the clearest indication that Jesus believed in fasting is that he practiced it himself. Let's read from Luke chapter four, verses one to four. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Jesus spent 40 days in solitude in the wilderness and he fasted throughout that time. When the devil tried to tempt him to break his fast, Jesus quotes the Old Testament to show that physical food is not enough to truly make us alive. The point he's making, of course, is that we need relationship with God. We need intimacy union with God. Jesus depended on his intimate relationship with God the Father throughout his early life and that's what he teaches us to do. Jesus fasted as an act of worship, devotion and obedience, choosing to draw near to the Father and making himself dependent on him. Well, yes, we do. In Acts 13, the early Christian believers are said to have been worshiping and fasting when the Holy Spirit spoke to them. And in Acts 14, fasting is linked with prayer. And of course, fasting has been practiced by generations of Christians ever since. Well, as we've said, fasting is first and foremost an act of worship. It is a way of devoting ourselves to God and putting him first in our lives. It is a way of drawing closer to him and experiencing greater intimacy with him. It makes sense then that we might be more likely to hear God speaking to us or experience more of his powerful presence in our lives when we fast. But it's not a magic formula or a way of getting what we want. Always remember, we fast as an act of worship or devotion. Quite simply, it is a way of telling God that you love him. Incidentally, that's why the prophet Isaiah talked about fasting that resulted in the needs of the poor being met and in the oppressed being set free. Because of course, it's impossible to tell God that you love him without also loving the people around you. As we draw near to God in worship, we experience greater union with him and the things that move his heart begin to move ours. As we seek God with all our heart, we experience more of his presence and release more of his love and power. 
Well, whilst fasting may have originated with giving up food, there's no reason why you couldn't choose to give up something else as an act of worship or devotion. The New Testament gives the example of a married couple agreeing to go without sexual intimacy for a time in order to devote themselves to prayer. You might choose to give up social media or Netflix or anything else that fills a significant space in your life. The principle behind it is that giving that thing up should be meaningful. It's supposed to feel like a sacrifice because that's the act of devotion. For sure, some people shouldn't fast food. For example, if they are pregnant or if they have certain medical conditions. If in any doubt at all, it's best to check with a doctor. Completely fasting from food will make you tired and may cause brief periods of feeling lightheaded. So bear that in mind if you have a physically demanding job. In some cases, it might be better to do a partial fast when you only fast at certain times or maybe have one meal a day or give up certain types of food. If you completely fast for three days or more, you'll need to be really careful how you start eating again. Seek advice from someone who's done a longer fast before or check out a book on fasting. And finally, always drink plenty of water. So however you feel led and drawn to engage in this time of prayer and fasting, may God bless you with greater intimacy with himself as you experience more of his powerful presence in your life through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. God bless you.